Today, let's get a real intuition for combinations and permutations. Um, again, the goal is to really understand things and not just memorize them. So let's hop in. The first question is, what do the words mean? Combinations, permutations, they seem like really fancy words. Um, here's one way I remember it. This image right here. This is a permutation lock, actually. The reason it's a permutation lock is because the order you put in the code matters, right? If the code is 10, 17, 23, you need to put it in that order. If you change the numbers around and try to use the code, it won't work. So this is actually a permutation lock. If it were a combination lock, it would allow you to put the numbers in any order, and it probably wouldn't be as useful. So that's kind of a little way that I think about it, that permutations, the order matters, right? The code, the order you put things in matters, and with combinations, any old order can do the job. So let's um, take a look at this, and actually permutations are actually easier to start with. So let's say I have eight people, and I've just numbered them one to eight, and they each have a, a name, A through H. Let's say I have now three medals I want to give out. I have a gold medal, a silver medal, and a bronze medal. So the question is, how many ways can I give out three medals to these eight people? Well, the first choice I have is I have eight people, and I need to pick a gold medal winner. So let's just say A gets it. Doesn't really matter, but let's just say it's A. Okay, so I had eight options, and A was the one I picked, but I had eight choices. Now, if I want to give out my silver medal, I have seven choices, right? Because one person's already got a medal, so now I have seven other people to pick from. Okay, let's just say B gets a silver medal. I have one medal left, the bronze, and I have six choices, right? Because I have six more people that don't have medals, and I pick one of them. So if you look at this, I had eight people to choose from, and then seven, and then six. And the number of options is actually multiplied each time, right? Because I could have picked any of the eight, then any of the seven, then any of the six. I'll be doing another video on understanding really why it's multiplication. But if you think about it, it probably should be multiplied, right? I had any of these eight people combined with any of these seven people combined with any of these six people. So um, that's actually the number of options that we have, eight times seven times six, and that works out to 336. So that's actually a ton of options for rearranging these medals among eight different people. So how can we think about this? Well, in our heads, I think, okay, eight times seven times six, 336, that works. But can we make a formula out of it? One thing we can do is start with a factorial. The factorial is eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, all the way down to one. We don't need that. We just need the beginning, eight times seven times six. So can we stop the factorial at five? And uh, we can, because five, four, three, two, one, that's actually five factorial. So if we divide them out, eight factorial divided by five factorial, all these five, four, three, two, one parts will cancel, and we're left with eight times seven times six. So this is kind of a fancy way of writing the first three items in eight factorial, right? We want to stop the factorial early, so we just divide out the parts that we don't need. And so the formula actually can look something like this. It's eight factorial divided by eight minus three factorial, because these are the ones that we took out, right? We're just trying to keep the first three and everything else we're dividing it out. So it's kind of a weird formula, but ultimately it's just trying to get the first few items out of the factorial. Now, if you see it as a general permutation formula, it looks like this, n and k. If I have n items and you want to assign k in a certain order, this is the formula. And in this case, I have eight people and I want to pick three in a very specific order out of that eight. So the number of options would be eight factorial divided by eight minus three factorial, which is this, and it simplifies down to, um, what is it, 336 as before. So here's the formula. Um, again, it looks fancy here, but really we're just trying to stop the factorial early. So when you work it out on a calculator, it's kind of cumbersome, but if you're doing it by hand, you can see it's just eight times seven times six. Okay, now let's think about combinations. With combinations, the order doesn't matter. So what would that mean for the metals? Well, if the order didn't matter, it would actually mean that just the metals were the same, right? I could give the, the same metal to different people. So instead of gold, silver, bronze, think about it as, hey, it's all tin cans. <laughs> Nobody wants a tin can, doesn't matter. You're just gonna pick three people out of the eight and give them each a tin can. The order you pick them doesn't really matter. So how can we think about this? Well. It's actually easier to start with the permutation and then work from there. So 
If we have 336 ways to give them out specifically, we can maybe divide out the redundancies, right? Because if we have, I don't know, Alice, Bob, and Charlie, if we rearrange them with who gets the silver, gold, and bronze, because it's the same tin can, it doesn't really matter. So all of those rearrangements about who, who got it first doesn't really matter. So the idea is that we're saying, okay, get all the specific versions and then divide out the redundancies. And how many different ways are there to arrange three metals with three people? Well, that's three times two times one. So it's kind of weird, right? We have the permutation for picking three people out of eight, and then we have the permutations of rearranging the three. So actually, that is the formula that we see here. We have the combination formula is actually all the permutations, right? So that's eight times seven times six, divided by the ways that we can rearrange those three metals, which is three times two times one. So when you see the formula, it looks really complicated, but again, you want to think through it intuitively, right? So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, we have eight people. Cool. Let's pick three in a certain order, eight times seven times six. And then we want to divide out the redundancies. We want to divide out the ways we could have rearranged them. So that would have been three times two times one. So the ultimate result is eight times seven times six divided by three times two times one, which is 336 divided by six or 56. So as you can see, there's a lot fewer combinations because all of those people, Alice, Bob, and Charlie, Charlie, Bob, and Alice, any of these rearrangements actually are the same thing. So um, that's kind of the intuition that I have. And really think about it, the permutations in your head, just work through the options, and then combinations are dividing at the redundancies. Hope that helps. Happy math.